So I was born in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada, but I grew up in Fort Erie, which is like a small town. It's like 30,000 people. Pretty much everyone's childhood dream is to be in the NHL. <laughs> I can't skate. Hey, the best producer in the game, man. The best producer in the game. What's up? I'm Murder Beats, hot producer from Canada. You know, upcoming. Is that the vice camera? Yeah. It's ours. Yo, Vice. I put my first beats out when I was like 16, 17 on YouTube, and they were just garbage. The first, like, probably like 50 beats I made or some whatever. But I was just trying to, like, replicate sounds, learn how to formulas, how to make beats. Because I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, God FL, Fruity Loops. And now people are so surprised that people are using this software to make the biggest hits of today's music, right? Murder on the beat, because he's not see it. nice. <laughs> And then, like, right off the bat, too, like, I knew this is what I wanted to do, like, 100%. Like, ever since ever since I started making beats, I just wanted to make trap beats. Like, I don't know, I just like it. My sound back then was just, this is like, I don't know, this is an upcoming kid trying to find a sound. You have a peak. But you're on the come up. What would you say for people who where you were four years ago, sneaking into anywhere? Uh, definitely sneak in, finesse your way. Serious, I don't know how to make beats. I was in like I was in like a Thai commercial as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, bang bang. What you know about it? What up, Vice? Second set was shut out. So Vice, you know what I'm saying? So, Behind the scenes in the murder and the summer tour. Shout out to G Easy, Lil Uzi, YB in the mirror, Almighty J, Pilo, Tight All Sign. You know, like I just started DJing like last year, but now just like really like being out there in front of like 15 to 25,000 people every night. I had like a lot of like mixtape stuff. So like just like placing my first beats and stuff was just like good just to hear people rap on my stuff. So I was like getting placements with rappers in the Bay and rappers in LA and stuff, like a month into producing. You're an upcoming producer and you don't really have clout yet. It's hard to just like connect to these rappers, you know? And especially like when rappers are like starting to buzz and stuff, they're not gonna like be answering people. So I found Skip with a flipper and I hit him up at the time. And I was like, yo, I'm gonna send you some beats. I need you to get them to Quavo for me and take off because at the time Offset was locked up. So then I sent him some beats and then he played them for Quavo and they ended up recording like three songs. They flew me out there and then that's when everything started. Went to like the hood, because at the time the Migos were living in the studio. Saw like everyone in there. Offset was locked up. Rappers in the studio. Smoking weed, guns around. <laughs> I gotta try to do one thing. I've been, I've been going to tour, so I can hit the casino too, right? I went in there with 2,000. Right over there with 2,000, left with 12,000. Taking flavor all over the country. Taking uh, flavor all over the state. Yeah. No. I understood at a young age and being early in my career that like you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. I always just like enjoy myself and just soaked up the energy and the atmospheres that I were in and use that to my advantage to make music. Coming from where you came from, did you ever feel out of place in that scene and you fit in right away? This is the thing, like with me, I've always been like out of place, but I've always felt I'm supposed to be there, you know? Anyone from the outside, third party, anyone like looking in would be like, this doesn't seem right. Like this random white kid from Canada with all these hood rappers, you know what I mean? But like me, I felt like I was just like playing my role, playing my part. What did your parents think at that time when you were traveling around? They didn't know what, I don't know. They, I don't know. 
kid from a town for 30,000 people who thinks that he can be the hottest producer in hip hop music. Like, it doesn't seem real, you know? I was 16 with the Migos, and now the Migos are the biggest in the game, you know? So it's just like, I have like, I had such high expectations going in. If you're from Atlanta, you want to work with all the Atlanta people. I'm from Canada, I want to work with Drake, Weekend, everybody, you know? I got a little name in Chicago, I got a name in Atlanta, and when I came back home, I want to build locally, so I have to work with local talent, you know? Yo, so look, so me and Drake made this song about six months ago, and we made it for all the ladies out there, so if y'all know the words, sing with me, let's go, drop that shit. He invited me over to his house, and then we came across the um, X Factor by Lauren Hill. Chop it up, maybe speed it up, slow it down, pitch it up, pitch it down, and then just apply the murder sauce. Made the beat right there, he wrote the song, and it was like done in like an hour and a half. That beat's fire, I like that shit. One thing with me though is that I'm never satisfied. Like, I could drop a number one with Drake and just like, I want more, you know? I just produce for myself, you know? Like, I, I make beats that I, I want. I feel like I have a pretty good ear and a, a beat that I like or I'd want everyone else would like and want to. So I just gotta like follow my own ear and just do what I wanna do. That's a big problem that a lot of people have that like when you get a hit and you go sign a publishing deal and you start to get into the industry more, people are gonna pull you different directions, wash up your brand. I, I got to where I am doing what I wanted to do. So I can't go wrong listening to myself. Cause when you first get hot, you're just, a, people look at you as a dollar sign. They just wanna use you and just get you out there and just milk you dry. <laughs> I think they, there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of talent in the young generation, and people just have to embrace it. And like a lot of people try to compare it to the old hip hop and shit, but we're in 2018. People are living in 2020, so it's like you gotta embrace the future. Thirty-three shows, like fifty days. That shit was just like a lot of fun, man. Like it was, it was like summer camp. That's how we were all describing it. It was like summer camp. Like we're getting in trouble. It's fun. Fire, fuck with it? Yes. Appreciate you. Bro. I know, I was like last second, I was like, damn, I forgot I did it. Yes. Man. I didn't go to the beach, I made it. So I killed you. Thank you. Bro. I want to hear what you do on it. I'm about to go in. Last day of tour, Miami, turn up tonight, we went crazy. I, I definitely haven't like even scraped the surface of pop music. But at the same time though, like all like the rap records I'm making is pop music too, you know? It's just popping like the way we want to make it. Is there anything about you that people want to let people know? I'm white. <laughs> <laughs> or that people might not expect. I'm white.